Hey guys, this is Drake. I'm Jesse. And today we want to talk to you guys specifically about the Red Komodo. As some of you know, uh, via Instagram and some social media, we are starting to work these into our workflow. And we thought we'd talk to you guys yeah. about the Komodo and why we chose it and our experiences so far. Yeah, I mean, historically, we've um, always been known as a black magic house where we pretty much everything that we have is black magic mm -hmm. uh, with just a couple of exceptions. But in large part, it pretty much runs all of our uh, broadcasts. And, you know, we, we, we kind of chose that, I mean, out of necessity. Like it was, yes. at the time, it was a, a decision based on budget. It really was a budget question. Mm -hmm. And... We wanted to get better quality for less money, um, and that at the time it made a lot of sense. And you know, in that time, like Black Magic has still been really great to us. In fact, we like a lot of the stuff that they have, um, but we also have some realistic expectations of what it is, and we are yes. aware of the shortcomings, mm -hmm. knowing where it, strengths and weaknesses were. Um, some of those were great product image or great video image, mm -hmm. um, great hardware, shorter shelf life. You know yes, what I mean? Like definitely. it's just we knew it wasn't gonna last, mm -hmm. and that was just something we were okay with, uh, because we felt like technology was changing so fast. That was an acceptable thing for us. Yeah, and I think in total we've owned around twelve Earth Mini Pros, and we have about six or seven working, mm -hmm. and maybe three of those half work. <laughs> yeah. So just to give an idea of, we we go through them pretty quick, um, which uh, yeah we do, and and and. and you know, we should also highlight that we've, um, a lot of you also know it, that we uh, are among the few, let's just say that, mm -hmm. among the few that have done live broadcasts on a large scale, like having, like our big conferences, like Heaven mm -hmm. Come, um, and a few others, where we've broadcast live with just using all red cameras. Yes. And that was a pretty significant moment for us. Mm -hmm. And I think that was an eye-opening experience for us. It was a dream that we had. Yes. And it was one that, through a sequence of events, mm -hmm. uh, actually became reality for us because it's expensive. It's expensive to do that kind of thing. Yeah, and those were all uh, rented in cameras, mm -hmm. but we did Red Ravens, and then the most recent uh, Corey Asbury rooftop shoot was on Red Gemini. Mm -hmm. um, four of those we did a live broadcast with as well. So we have dabbled in the Red environment. Um, I mean, I mean, gosh, we should bring up Nathan's project. Uh, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. The rooftop or mountaintop, sorry, mm -hmm. shoot was also a epics, weren't, weren't they? Scarlets, red scarlets. Oh, scarlets. The original okay. Scarlet uh, is what that album was shot on. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, the Komodo came out, and yeah. you know, quick backstory is it's a six K camera, global shutter. It's six thousand dollars. It's actually five hundred dollars less than the Earth Mini Pro G two, which is pretty insane for a red camera. Mm -hmm. um, so we quickly were like, oh, this could be it. Um, I got my hands on one as fast as I could, and we messed with it, and now we have three in rotation um, at the church that we're using, and actually the multi-view that you see here um, is camera five and six are Komodos, and the rest are Ursas. Um, so it does a decent job of blending with other cameras mm -hmm. um, using the Rec. 709 output, but... Um, if we were all red Komodo, I would definitely shoot Rec 2020. It's just a di completely different look. Uh, yeah. That's how we've shot Heaven Come, and the Cory shoot was on Rec 2020. It just, it looks a little nicer. But um, for now, we'll stick with the Rec 709. But this camera really came in in a price point that makes it affordable yeah. for a lot of people to jump into that market. If you're already in the Ursa Mini Pro, C200, the EVA1, and now the new Sony uh, FX6, um, it, it's right in there. But 6K global shutter it's, and a red sensor is really, really hard to beat. Well, in, in our, making our decision, you know, like we were like, well, do we go cheap and get six pocket 6Ks from Blackmagic? Right. Mm -hmm. um, which clearly is not going to give you more than 1080 out. So that wasn't an ideal scenario mm -hmm. for us. Um, and then also... We were looking at Gen, Gen 2 uh, 4.6K yes. Blackmagic cameras, which has all the I.O. that you really want and need and that we were used to and honestly would be the simplest, fastest, easiest, and great choice. It's yes. not a bad choice at all. Um, 
but we started to really evaluate like what was our workflow and what did we learn from mm -hmm. you know from the years prior and we we wanted something that was more flexible on the creative side mm -hmm. so again not plug and play right um but what's going to allow us to expand or grow in a creative path uh in, in a post edit and as well as uh really and, and in the live environment mm -hmm. and so it did present its own problems though too so we, yeah. we can talk about some of those things mm -hmm. a single video output is my one con mm -hmm. with the camera. And for example, I mean, you know, you you want to be able to have output for, for a broadcast environment. If you're doing a 4K workflow, you want to be able to send the maximum resolution and video space you can mm -hmm. from the main output and then also have a monitor output yes. that's maybe scaled back at 1080 mm -hmm. or whatever it needs to be. Um, and, and unfortunately, this doesn't allow you to do that. Yeah, and you know, the Ursa does it um, it has a monitor out and a program out, so you can have two different things. It also has a flip out swivel screen, so that's pro for the Ursa is two video outs, one a swivel screen. This does have a built in screen, it just doesn't swivel, so you can't use it in every mm -hmm. position. Um, and, my, and for us, a lot of the times, like even like a follow cam or something in an audience or on a tripod, mm -hmm. that monitor is going to be way up high and you can't see yeah exactly into the menu so mm -hmm. so it's a con but you can work around it uh it just means that you have to have a monitor that has an sdi loop out or loop out of your wireless unit into your monitor um again it's a small con like it's it's work aroundable uh it doesn't kill everything i think that the image quality outdoes the need for having a second port like the quality of this camera, and that's the biggest pro over even the Ursa Mini, how it reproduces color, how it handles highlights, is so much better than the Ursa that it's worth dealing with a single SDI port. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's fun, like we should probably mention, like these were originally designed as crash cams for RED, mm -hmm. uh, essentially a high-end GoPro uh, replacement. Um, obviously, we're not gonna throw these around but that is what they were built for and they're tough so they're not gonna have articulating arms and things like that this is definitely if you're looking to go towards the style that Bethel has which is that cinema broadcast look this is more of the camera for you if you're looking to go more traditional I would even sway more towards the Ursa Mini Pro um, because it has yeah. things like the B4 mount and you can control it with CCUs and things like that this you can't we're already used to not using CCUs and not mm -hmm. having tally and all that kind of stuff. And so this just fits right into our workflow. Um, but if that's something that you're looking for, this might not be the right choice. Let's um, let's talk about the color reproduction and like get into the color and the image quality and why we think it uh, beats the Ursa. Yeah, I mean, gosh, I can tell you right now, dual native ISOs and all those fancy things, I mean, that's great and all, but it's just like you find the sweet spot and that's it. There's just not much in between, mm -hmm. and it's frustrating. Well, and for us, just so you guys know, we range in our ISO from 250 to 800. We usually never go above 800, and a lot of times, even at 250 or 400, we have to add a stop or two of ND. Um, so our room is very, very bright. We have lots of theatrical lighting. We have LED walls. It's extremely bright. Um, so we're not cranking the ISO on these cameras. They're not low light cameras, but we have a lot of light to play with. Um, most of the time we're running the lenses between 1.5 and F4. Like that's kind of the range for our aperture on any of our lenses as we try to stay within that. Yeah. Um, Follow cams usually around f4 just to have a little bit easier time with focus mm -hmm. stage cameras as wide open as possible so if that's 1.5 fantastic <laughs> yeah i mean uh, sometimes yeah these don't have built-in nds nope. so we'd have to add variable nds on the front so usually it's a combination of iso iris and uh nds mm -hmm. absolutely but kind of changes with the lens that mm -hmm. we're using for that day in the position so the set you see behind us is actually a great example of color and we can play some clips, um, but the color reproduction that Red gives us is far, far superior to what yeah, Blackmagic is putting we'll, out. We'll link, we'll link in the description to the actual multi. But you can clearly see 
um, in a couple songs that we'll show you where the Ursas look extremely blue and actually the lights in person were purple or pinkish. And then you can see on the Komodo how it represents mm -hmm. that color to what our eye was actually seeing in the room, which was more of the, the pinkish purple and way less blue. Um, and both Komodos were representing it correctly, whereas the Ursas were just straight blue. There was not even a hint of purple. I was so impressed at how you could see the difference of the cameras on our LED wall. Yeah. Which is older. It's used. Mm -hmm. It's not the tightest pixel. Nope. It's it's pretty... I was pretty impressed by that. Yeah, it was honestly um, amazing to see the quality, even in the noise. Um, this had... The Komodo had way less noise than the Ursa did, even at in that 400 to 800 range. The, we've noticed that the Ursas have a lot of noise in the sensor, and these were so, so clean and just looked super, super... Um, cinematic, even some of the lens flares, you could see more of the flare just because the sensor could see more quality. Yeah, that it's was super that trippy. That was really wild, yeah. We were seeing the same flares in a new light, if you will. Wow. Light like that? Oh, yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty good. good. <laughs> um, and then lastly, uh, highlights. Uh, the Ursas, when you kind of blow out the sensor with a lot of light for like big moments, it kind of gets a little smeary um, across the image, whereas the Komodo handles the highlights so well to where it's not super smeary. You can tell it's getting brighter, but the the detail still remains. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It still holds sharpness in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could say maybe that's our variable indies that are built in or something, but we've tried it in all, all scenarios, and these are wide open with no no indies. No indie, yeah. Um, and even with the, the Ursas without the indie, um, they still are smeary. Yep, so exactly. we've checked, made sure there's no UV filters on our lenses or anything either. So um, all those things, all optically, we've we've gone through the whole chain there and mm -hmm. it doesn't really seem to change all that much. Exactly. If wow. you are looking for a cinema camera that's the same price as the Ursa <laughs> and the C200 and the EVA1 and want a better quality image, the Komodo is a fantastic camera if you can get your hands on one. Mm -hmm. They are extremely sold out. Some dealers can still get them. Uh, but I highly recommend the Komodo as a cinema camera for broadcast, for films, for anything. Well, guys, if you liked this video and uh, the content that we were talking about, feel free to uh, like and subscribe. We put out a multi-view every single Sunday. Yes, we do. And uh, we also put out... Uh, content just like this as often as we can so yeah if you have any specifics that and things that you want to know more about feel free to drop them in the comments um, we're trying to get to all of them and if you haven't checked out our multis go check out the multi live mm -hmm. we do try to speak to you and answer questions live on our comms which is pretty awesome yep and uh, we almost always have someone moderating as much as possible it is during our live broadcast so mm -hmm. it's not always going to be perfect <laughs> but uh we have fun um, bringing you guys yep. along the ride with us. So, And if you can't watch it live because you're working on Sunday, yep. they're always posted to our YouTube, yeah. so go check out that. And if you want to see uh, real-time current updates, we post on our Instagram almost daily. So go follow us, Bethel Production, on Instagram. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one.